Hi, I'm Shane Gebauer with Brushy Mountain Bee Farm. And what we're going to try and do right now is catch a swarm that's hanging in a tree behind us. And to do that, we're going to use our hip swarm retriever. Basically, this is a bucket on a pole, and you can add any length of pole you want. It comes with a coupler. It takes three-quarter inch conduit so that you can reach to higher heights. But you've got to be careful. This is conduit. It's metal. It can conduct electricity, and power lines can often be hidden in trees where swarms can often be hanging. So always make sure you do a thorough search and make sure that there are no power lines in the vicinity that you're doing this. It does come with a warning, but please make sure you take the time to do a little uh, investigation to make sure you're not near any hazards. So I've got a short pipe here that I'm going to attach to this. You'll also notice this rope and that what this rope does is it goes up through the conduit. And so when I take my lid off, you'll see that it's hanging onto that rope. So I go up underneath the swarm, I bump it to knock the swarm into the bucket, and then I can pull this rope and it closes up the bucket until I get it down and can get it into a hive that's behind us. That's pretty much all there is to it. The trick is making sure we get the queen. So let's get started. Well, I can feel it heavy with bees. Now one of the things with this Bees can cook themselves pretty easily, so I don't want to leave them in this too long. I'm not sure how many I got. There's still a bunch up there. So I can treat this just as I would a package. Bees in here, I can bump them down if I wanted to. I could spray them with a little bit of sugar water so they don't fly as easily. And when you're catching a swarm, a nice trick is to put a queen excluder underneath the, uh, the hive body. That way, if you do get your queen, she can't fit through that queen excluder to leave. So you can find her to the hive for a few days until they get settled in and they're more inclined to stay then. Just make sure that you do go back in and remove that queen excluder. Otherwise, drones will not be able to exit the hive once it gets uh, established and cooking along. So I'm going to go ahead and bump this down. And I'm going to put this lid on with the frames. You can see there's a bunch of bees flying around. And a lot of these bees are from the, the cluster, the swarm that was hanging in the tree. If you'd noticed, before we got started, the cluster was sort of divided in two parts. The upper one was on a branch which was really difficult to get, so we sort of had hopes that the queen would be in that lower group, that lower cluster, and if we could catch her, then we'd have a good luck, uh, a good success of catching the swarm. And the swarm wasn't all that far away, and if we go over there now, the bees that we didn't knock off the branch or shortly thereafter congregated back onto that branch are no longer there. And it's all these bees that we see flying around now coming in, all these bees you've no, you'll notice have their, their uh, abdomens extended up and the Nazanoff gland exposed. The Nazanoff gland is at the tip of the abdomen and so they bend it up and then the tip of the abdomen hooks over to expose that gland and we can see that here. That's uh, emitting the come hither pheromone as it's referred to. And all these bees that were clustered up there after we, we knocked them off are now coming into this hive. And we can see some of them walking in here and all these bees fanning. So I think we did a really good job here. I think we actually got the queen. Still not sure. I'm hopeful though. And then all these bees that were up there will now settle in here and we'll have to check back tomorrow to see how we really did. We're back at the swarm that we caught just about five days ago. When we caught it, it was hanging in a tree just over there. We weren't sure if we got the queen or not. We were fairly certain based on the activity, but we're going to go back in today and see if there's eggs in there and see whether we got the queen and whether she's doing what she's supposed to be, which is taking charge of this colony and making sure that it's growing. So we've got it in just a single medium box right now. I'm just going to give them a little smoke in the entrance. 
smoke them up through the top for a second or two. Whoa, my goodness. Look at all those bees. I'd say we did pretty well given that uh, all these bees have stuck around for about five days. Look at all these bees. That was one heck of a swarm. When you work a colony, you always want to start with one of the outside frames. Generally, the queen's going to be to the inside of the, the brood chamber in the middle somewhere and go in a little deeper. Now that that one frame's out, notice how I can slide this one to the outside a little bit, create a little space so I don't roll the queen should she be on this frame. And I'm not really looking for the queen. What I'm actually doing is I'm looking for eggs, which, are, which is the best sign that the queen is present. And not just an egg here or there, but a good pattern of eggs with the eggs being all the way down to the bottom of the cell, planted on end, and just one egg per cell. A good pattern with eggs in that orientation suggests to me that the queen is present and doing what she's supposed to be doing. Look at these frames just covered up. Oh, there we are. We've got some eggs in there. And like I said, it's not just one or two here and there. It's a nice pattern of eggs suggesting that she's alive and well. Let's take a look at one more frame here. And based on how full these frames are with nectar and honey and eggs in these cells, I'm going to uh, go ahead and add the next story because they're quickly running out of space even though they've only been in here less than a week. And I've got a box here that's got some frames of drawn comb. Give them a little smoke, smoke them in there so I don't crush so many. And I'm going to go ahead and put this box of drawn comb on this hive. So someone's misfortune by having their hive swarm is our fortune by being able to catch it. We got a free colony. They're off and running, growing, really strong, looking good, and hopefully we'll be able to get supers on here, honey supers, in just a short while to capture some poplar and black locust flow. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. We'll see you at the bee farm.